So this particular report is looking at several different demographics and two different genders. And if I was in charge of uh, only two demographics, perhaps my adventure and sport demographics, what I could do is use filters to remove the rest of the data and just concentrate on my area. And basically breadcrumbs allow you to see how you've filtered and adjust those filters. So if we return to our dashboard now, and we'll go to the report we were just looking at, and we'll just reset these filters. What you'll see here is my report. And remember, I just want to see my adventure and sport. So here are my filters. And I just simply select the values I'm after. If I want to select multiple, I can hold down, uh, depending on the computer you're on, you can hold down Control and Shift for Windows, or you can hold down Command or Shift, depending on the items. So we hit Go. And you'll see my report's been refreshed to just be adventure and sport. You'll also see I have little breadcrumbs here. So if I close my filter panel, I can still see the filters that have been applied, but I now have a lot more room on the page to see the main report. And if I click on this item, I can actually adjust my values or remove them completely. Okay, so that's breadcrumbs and filters. So we'll just close this report now and once again return to our storyboard. So we just slide along and see what we were up to. <laughs> Alright, so the next item we're going to have a look at is brushing. And brushing allows you to restrict the data you're looking at in a chart by highlighting it and either opting to remove that particular selection from the chart or keep it and remove everything else. So let me just go to the previous slide and show you here on an active report. If I were to select this area here, I now get these two options. So I might choose to keep those two areas and you'll see that everything else was removed. Would reset that and I'll return to the main report. Brushing basically it just allows you to filter a report but doing so by clicking and dragging on the actual chart rather than having to use the user prompt filters which we just saw. So the next slide we're going to have a look at is the date slider and unit selection. Now these two pieces of functionality belong to a specific uh, type of formatted chart uh, and the function is called a time series chart. Now just take note of that name but don't worry about it too much. You'll come back to it in one of the more advanced sessions. Uh, for now we'll just have a look at these two functions as they are. So the first we'll have a look at is the date slider. And you'll see at the bottom of this chart I have this little slider here that I can slide and move around. Alternatively what I can do is select a particular area to zoom into or out to. And you'll see that my chart keeps updating as I do. Um, alternatively we have the unit selection which we often will use in conjunction with a date slider. And basically what this does is it changes the aggregation in the chart. Now if that is all just jargon to you, <laughs> what we have in our chart at the moment is our sales, or I'm sorry, our camp rating by month. Now in my actual report I have camp rating by individual day and what we've done is we've set it to be month here. If I want to change that I could change that to year and as we're only looking at one year, it doesn't have a line, so we could change it to quarter and see our data by quarter. And what is happening here is that Yellowfin is summing our data up to the various levels that we need. So as I get to smaller ranges with my slider, say I've got a particular quarter now, I might go to smaller units in my chart, so maybe week and so on. So if I was looking at a whole year, I might look at month. 
but if I'm looking at a quarter, I might look at week and so on. So it's just a really nice way of starting out with a very high level report. So you might see everything by year and see a few years worth of data and then allowing you as the user to narrow that down yourself and pick how much data you want to see and how detailed you want it to be. And the next session, uh, the next item follows on from that and it's called series selection. And basically, this can be used with those time series functions as well. And what it allows you to do is switch the numeric value you're looking at on your chart. So when you create a chart, generally speaking, the basic components are a category and a numeric value. So you might look at your sales by year, which is what we have now. Now, if we wanted to change this chart to be profit by year, we could use series selection. So we just click on profit up here and it will change it. So the category stays the same, which is the date, but the line will change. So if I scroll along, I could change this to rating or number of athletes. And it's just a really nice way of seeing lots of different values across the same category range, whether it be time or uh, department or product code or whatever your business uses. Now, finally, we're going to have a look at interacting with maps. So to start out with, uh, we've got all of your sort of standard uh, mapping navigation styles that you'll be familiar with. Uh, so you can do things like navigate using this on map navigation if you have it enabled. If you don't, you can scroll in using your mouse scroll. So I can zoom in and out quite easily. I can also use the navigation buttons that are down the bottom if I wish. Now you have all the options to turn these on and off when you create the map. Uh, so you don't have to see all of these. We also have series selection again, so we're currently looking at sales, but we could change that to look at rating. And you can see my map was updated. We also have layer selection, so if I have different layers, I can choose those. And we have tooltips and highlighting. So the tooltips and highlighting basically allow you to hover over data points or areas, and you see little tool tips that will give you a little bit more information about what you're looking at. And the highlight is that yellow highlight that you can turn on or off and you can customize that if you don't want yellow. Okay. So finally we're going to have a look at analytic dashboards and we'll actually do that on the dashboard so we can get a feel for how they work. But basically all of the reports on a particular tab can be linked up. And the person that creates the tab is the one that has to do that. And as a user or a consumer, you can come along and use the filters on a tab or interact with brushing and things and have that reflected across the rest of the reports. So there's a lot of different ways that that can be done. It can be done with filters, with data, with brushing, uh, drill down and sliders. But what we'll have a look at today is just the filters. So I'll just leave my storyboard and we'll return to this tab here. And if I look on the left, I have a range of filters. And what I'm going to do is just apply two of those and hit go. And what you'll see is that all of the reports on my tab were updated. And if I just reset that, and what that means is they can be, uh, all the reports can be adjusted and filtered at once. So every report is looking at the same subset of data. So it's very easy from a user point of view um, to make use of. Uh, you literally just apply filters as you would for a single report, uh, but they get applied across all of the reports. So it's very handy.